Greetings, my scattered sisters and brothers in the Lord. I trust you know the Lord is with you wherever you find yourself scattered and that you know that his presence with you is more than enough for whatever you might face today. We are working with 2 Kings chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 7. Uh, let me go ahead and read this story to you. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. So you get the you get the problem. The situation is dire. The lady has already lost her husband, so now she's a widow, and her husband died without all the bills being paid, and yet he feared the Lord, he honored the Lord, but now she's afraid that she's going to lose her two sons, that they'll be made slaves in order to pay off the debt of their family. And so she goes to Elisha with the problem. Elisha responds, verse 2, Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little olive oil. Now this is really interesting to me. She goes to Elijah and brings the problem to him, and Elijah's response is, How can I help you? What do you want me to do for you? And then he comes with a question, What do you have in your house? That's kind of backwards. You would think that Elisha would be taking inventory of what he has. Like, how can I help you? What do I have that I can help you with? But instead, he flips it. And he says, what do you have in your house? And her response is that she has nothing except she has a jar that has some oil in it. And that's all she has. But Elisha makes her take inventory of what she has. And initially she thinks she has nothing. My house is empty. I don't have anything. And then she realizes, wait a minute, I have this jar of oil. And so just those two things in terms of Elisha being the one that is sought after for help. And instead of thinking about what he has, he flips it on her and says, okay, what do you have? And then her initial thought is I have nothing. But then as she takes inventory, she realizes, wait a minute, I do have a jar of oil. Let's see what happens next. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. So Elijah tells her, to have her sons go to all their neighbors and, and ask for all their empty jars. Now, we don't read a lot between the lines here, but there's nowhere mentioned where she says, why do I have to do that? Nowhere mentioned where the sons say, why do we have to do that? And it might have seemed crazy. Maybe it didn't. Maybe they were hopeful. Maybe they had faith. But they at least had the faith, even if they didn't know what Elisha was up to. They had the faith to listen to him and to go to the neighbors and collect all the empty jars that they could. Don't read about any grumbling, any complaining. They just did it. And so then they report to Elisha. And Elisha says, okay, start pouring oil into all the jars. And they do. And the oil never runs out doesn't stop flowing until they get to the last jar and that's filled and then those jars of oil become the means whereby they will be taken care of their debts are paid and they have enough to live on so I keep thinking about this story and kind of running it through my mind and the first thing again you know she comes to Elijah she goes to the right person and Elisha instead of thinking about what he has and how he is going to meet her need, first thing he does is, what do you have? What's in your house? Maybe that's the best way we can start to help people. Instead of trying to think, what do I have? Ask them to kind of start thinking about, okay, well, what do you have? 
And then as she takes inventory, she initially feels like she has nothing, but then discovers that she does have something. It doesn't look like much, but it's a jar of oil. And as she tells Elisha about that, now Elisha tells her what to do. And she goes and she borrows from her neighbors all their jars, and the Lord performs a miracle, and she's able to have enough oil to sell and to provide for her family, and she doesn't lose her sons. So don't know where you find yourself scattered today, but I see a few things in this. One, act in faith like the widow did. She, first of all, went to Elijah. Second, she did take inventory of what she had and discovered that she had some oil. And then she did what Elisha told her to do. She listened to Elijah. She acted in faith. She collected jars from all of her neighbors. And then second thing, wherever you find yourself scattered, if you're the one that is being asked for help, don't just think about what resources you have. What resources does the person have who's asking for help? And then ultimately, we listen to the Lord. Uh, no doubt the Lord instructed Elisha in terms of telling the widow what to do. The widow followed through on that. The Lord provided. And so that's maybe the most important thing, is that really it's the Lord who is enough. And as we seek the Lord, as we offer to the Lord what the Lord has blessed us with, we discover that the Lord does indeed provide. So wherever you find yourself scattered today, uh, know that his presence with you is more than enough for whatever you might face today. God bless. Have a great day.